got all of this really, really important stuff. So we're going to move on right here, and I'm just going to go through it really quickly because we don't have much time to discuss kind of what the campaign is about and what we've been doing. So Moving on right UK is an independent, largely volunteer-led national campaign to spread the message that ordinary people can help to build a better banking system through our buying power. So we aim to provide as many people as possible with the information and confidence so that they can make informed decisions about the kind of financial institution, financial institutions that they want to support. And at the same time, we hope to strengthen the ethical finance sector and kind of enhance the debate surrounding financial reform. So Move Your Money UK was launched following a really successful movement in the US, which led to 10 million people moving their money out of the big banks and 60,000 people in one day, which was Bank Transfer Day, which is pretty cool. So kind of the campaign was started because so there was a financial crisis and we bailed out the banks um, with the biggest taxpayer funded bailout in history and yet they continued to pour money into socially useless lending, risky high frequency trading, leaving us exposed to more crises, instability and falls. Um, government support for the banks by the bailouts and the too big to fail subsidies that they receive every year makes these activities artificially profitable while the UK taxpayers footed the bill to the tune of £500 billion. Um, they also pay out huge bonuses, avoid tax, and we all have to bear the brunt of brutal public sector cuts. On a community level, we've also seen a really worrying rise in payday lenders, um, so companies like Wonga that are targeting poor areas and there are no restrictions on the kind of interest rates that they can charge, which leads to severe and spiraling debt in communities that are already steeped in debt and are affected the worst by the cuts. So credit unions, for example, provide a really valuable source of credit which can combat the dominance of such outlets. And there are also currently well over one million people who don't have a bank account and several more million people who have a bank account and just don't touch it. I mean, these people are completely excluded from any kind of interaction with mainstream finance. And credit unions can also tackle this problem because they offer uh, families and households on low incomes easily accessible loans and way better rates than high street banks. So Camden Credit Union and London Capital Credit Union are ones which are located near here. And if you're interested in credit unions around this area, they'd be really good ones to check out. So we thought, you know, there's been a financial crisis and maybe naively things might start to get better. But 2012 seems to have been the year of the scandal. So we've had LIBOR, we've had the payment protection insurance scandal, and we've had money laundering, which is all of just really the tip of an iceberg of bad practice. The banks don't respond to the needs of the public and there is a complete lack of accountability by politicians and regulators who either can't or won't um, create a finance system that works for society at large. So for example, Barclays alone, just one tiny example, is the world's leading investor in the arms trade and also invests in companies that produce cluster munitions which is a weapon which is A, banned by international convention, and B, has long-term negative impacts on civilians. So this is the kind of things that our <coughs> banks are investing in. So the discontent felt by society to the banks can be summed up really, I'm not going to bore you all with like loads of stats, but I think this survey found some quite interesting results by which the consumer watchdog. So it found that 84% of people think the banks haven't done enough to prevent another credit crunch. 71% of people think that banking culture hasn't got better since the start of the crisis. 50% think that the government's handling of the banking industry has also got worse. And 80% think that there is a deeper problem within the industry than just a few rogue individuals. So um, if you're speaking to someone and you're kind of talking to them about the campaign and you're like, you should move your money and they don't really buy the ethical argument, they don't really buy the environmental argument, it's also been proven that banks that base their decisions on the needs of people and the environment also see comparable or even better financial returns. So there is an economic argument that can be made as well, because not everyone thinks that you know, the tar sands argument is a reason for, to move their money. Um, as Peter Blom, who is chair of the Global Alliance for Banking on Values and chief executive of Triodos Bank, Europe's largest sustainable bank, said, doing good is beneficial for banks and society, not just in a theoretical and ethical sense, but also financially when measured against conventional benchmarks such as the financial bottom line, um, the list just goes on and on I mean, like what the banks have been up to this year. And recently we've been running some workshops around the country. Mm, one minute. So yeah, and we've kind of been speaking to people about in an ideal world what they would like to see from their bank. And it turned out it turned out that people wanted good customer service, they wanted ethical investments, they wanted uh, money being invested in their local communities. And all of these things do exist in the alternate finance sector. We just don't care about it as much and we move your money is really 
working to kind of increase the profile of the alternate finance sector in the country. So this year we've helped encourage over 500,000 new accounts being opened with local mutual ethical providers, um, which has really led to tangible benefits for the real economy and for societies, but now we need the help of people like you and your friends and your families. I mean, the only way to create a fairer and more equitable banking system is to deprive the banks of the resources that they use to further their own skewed objectives. So, as I was saying, a lack of public awareness and kind of insufficient resources for marketing and lobbying of the alternate finance sector means that these benefits of this work isn't highlighted. But ultimately, Move Your Money is about raising awareness that there are better ways to bank. If you move your money to a better bank, and you can feel good about where your money is, and you know what it's doing when you're sleeping, I mean, that's a really great thing. And if we all did that, we, we can change the system. So move your money and tell all your friends too. It's easy and all the information is on our website, which is www.moveyourmoney.org.uk. And I think I've got our friends I'm going to hand over to Joanna. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Um, I'm going to talk briefly now about um, Move Money's plans to move into the space of lobbying uh, local authorities and institutions um, to move their funds. Um, so, why focus on council and institutional banking? Um, as Abby mentioned, we've had half a million customers across the UK um, shift their accounts uh, from tethered to failed banks to the ethical alternatives. However, um, because the majority of those accounts are relatively small amounts, we're not having a sort of systemic change that we need a critical mass, if you will, to really change bank behaviour. So what we're looking through now is to leverage um, the um, interest in the campaign to ask people to actively lobby the local authorities um, and businesses to get on board and to move their funds to mutuals, um, ethical banks and local alternatives. Um, and uh, we think councils are one of the most important institutions to target for a number of reasons. Um, there are 468 councils across the UK. Um, collectively, they have an annual budget of around £122 billion. Pounds, and uh, they spend about £70 billion a year on projects. So they have a lot of scale, a lot of funds to move. And if that money was invested ethically and responsibly, um, we would have the money to invest in renewables and mass transit and all the things we need at the local level um, to address things like climate change. And we also need to look at the link between the banks, um, the bailouts, and austerity and local government. Um, we know that banks cause the crisis, um, costing the taxpayer around 1.5 trillion pounds. Um, local government had borne the brunt of um, paying for that, that crisis, um, with 28% funding cuts across the board, and approximately 700,000 job losses. Um, still, two thirds of um, UK councils bank with the big four banks, so Barclays, HSBC, um, Lloyds. Um, in 2010, um, George Osborne laid out his spending cuts. Um, he was looking to shave about 83 billion pounds off the um, annual off the budget, um, without looking at the um, elephant in the room, which is the, the tax gap or the amount of money evaded by corporations and individuals which is estimated at between 100 billion and 123 billion pounds. Um, we also know that the austerity cuts are purely ideological. Um, the impact of the cuts is not even across the board. We're finding that Labour councils are losing around 103 pounds per person at the town hall. Uh, Tory councils only 37 pounds. Uh, we've had a summer of shame in the city of London. Um, we've had libel reading, PPI and credit default swap was selling, and money laundering by HSBC. Clearly the culture of our banks has not changed. Um, the Vickers Commission set up to prevent another crisis which had occurred in 2008 only looks at bank structure but doesn't actually look at the behaviour of individuals within banks which caused the crisis. Um, we also know that high street banks are refusing to lend to small medium enterprise, the generator of jobs in the economy with about 60% of all jobs coming from SMEs. Um, we know that banks lobby and facilitate the tax avoidance schemes used by Starbucks, um, Google, Vodafone. Um, so by 
acting against the banks to change their behaviour, and to support alternative banks, we can start to address the uh, tax avoidance issue as well. Um, councils are democratic bodies. Um, they are answerable to local citizens, so therefore we have an opportunity to lobby our council to act in the public interest. At Move Your Money, we think part of this is having the council move its accounts from the likes of RBS, Lloyds and um, Barclays to a more ethical alternative. Um, we'd like to see councils um, supporting um, credit unions to crowd out paid lenders like Wonga. And um, we'd like to support banks that do invest in uh, renewables but don't invest in big oil and tar sands. So progress today. Um, we began the campaign back in February and since that time Move Your Money have been speaking with London Borough of Lambeth and we're talking to them about moving a 2.4 billion pound account from um, that West RBS. Um, we've had some fantastic support from uh, Jenny Jones of the Green Party, who's looking to move uh, the GLA and TFL um, out of Barclays. And we'll be developing an ethical banking toolkit for local authorities, uh, which we hope to release in February of next year. Um, we're working with the Tax Justice Network, um, Richard Murphy and Co, and uh, we're looking to um, include um, procurement uh, criteria within council contracts, which actively prohibit um, companies that operate in secrecy jurisdictions and tax havens from bidding on council contracts. So therefore, all of the big banks um, who operate you know, a multitude of, um, of shadow organisations overseas will be excluded from um, being involved in the council banking environment. And uh, we'd also like to encourage you to open up a conversation with your council about its own banking arrangements, firstly to find out where they bank, and then to talk to the council about shifting to a more ethical alternative. And uh, how you can get involved, um, please take a look at our website. Um, if you haven't already, uh, move your money. Um, educate friends and family, have them do the same. And if you're interested in advice or lobbying your council, um, please drop me an email at um, joel at movemoney.org.uk. Um, finally, I'd like to show you a brief video from uh, Jenny Jones, recorded uh, about two weeks ago, in support of our campaign.